There are three great powers that every man should have. One is power over yourself. In the fruit of the spirit, we call that self-control. Before you control anything in this world, you must have power over your appetites, power over your passions, power over your pleasures, power over your cravings, power over your emotions, power over your psychological interpretations and perceptions of life, power over your flesh, power over your soul, restraint. Do you understand what I'm saying? Godly character. A patterned and disciplined life. Today you're praying over the conference. It was so nice. I'm going to go back and pray. The pastor told us to pray. Let me go back and pray. And then you go back to one month, one week, or oh no, some of you two days. <laughs> you're, you're like, I don't know whether you've seen how, I, don't, I call them the, the New Year Resolution Blues. That's my own term. You know those people who wake up and say, New Year Resolution, I'm going to lose weight. And then in, Jan, in January, you see them running. By second week January, they are back to their food. <laughs> Are you following what I'm trying to tell us? The second power is power over the gifts, physical and spiritual, that God will give you. What do you do when you have a healing anointing? Do you use it for transaction? If you don't pay me, I'm not going to pray for you. What do you do with your gift of singing? Do you worship in in, 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 in church do you use it to benefit people or you, it's, it's a destruction for the world what do you use your wealth for the possessions physical and spiritual you must have power over them because if you don't they can destroy you do you know there's just there's a young man right now if he got just one hundred thousand dollars he can die he's just no hundred is a lot ten thousand dollars is enough to kill him he would drink himself and die. You see? So he has no control over what the Lord has what? Given him. Praise the Lord Jesus. We, we've had experiences where they were humble before the glory came. They were approachable before the anointing came. And when the anointing came, they became different men. They cannot control what God has given them. Number three is power over men. There's a lot of power to be able to tell thousands, come tomorrow and they will hear. To be able to tell people that this is what we're going to do and they will not ask you how or where. Let's go. Because the people who in the sack of influence cannot control even their wife. Only their wife. Only their husband. Only their child. Just one child. You, just one. You have this boy. He, come. No. He goes outside. You chase him. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. God has called us to have power over men. How we use that power like Paul says, it's a liberty to serve them. Don't forget that. Not to control them. To serve them. Jesus drew men to him to serve them. Now that's the irony of the kingdom versus the world. Because the world has power to control. Politically, socially, economically, influence, influencing, uh, manipulation, Jezebel because it's manipulative it's mind controlling it's everything else controlling you you understand what I'm saying recently I saw a commentary was it the social dilemma is it the social dilemma you should watch it and then they were showing how men are using YouTube and many of these you know social sites to control us by algorithm and some of us in our liberties and free will are actually the deepest slaves to the very engines that some of these people invented. And some of these men don't even use the very things in their own houses, but they're selling them to us. That's another conversation. If you work for YouTube or Google, I'm sorry. Praise the Lord. 
But back to this. Why do we need that power? Why? You see, when Jacob wrestled with God, you remember his wrestling with God? He said, Thou has wrestled with God and overcome. And he says, Thou art set above the princes, for you have obtained power with God and with man. Power with God and with man. Power with God and with man. So it's not wrong. The only question is how do you use that power? God can bring those people to you that you will work with them to push the kingdom of God to the next level. But whether you want it or not, there are people who have a lot of power in this world and they're using it to destroy. One time I saw a video back in the years of Michael Jackson. He went on a stage and the guy just turned. Wah. I kid you not, they showed videos of women fainting. He just is. And women fainted and they put them in an ambulance. Imagine you could do that and people receive Jesus. Oh my God! People would give their lives just to get to a Michael Jackson concert. And the devil has understood how it works. I was sharing with the pastors how I saw a video of one country in Europe and it was a rainy day and it was freezing and it was snow and they were in the snow frozen and they were watching football and it rains and a Christian tells you I was not able to make it how much power does football have on men who invented the idea how much listen this is a lot Facebook has 2.9 billion followers. Christianity is 2.3. How much power do you think Zuckerberg has? In some nations, they even have to freeze Facebook because it can change the outcome of a political election. Because he understood how much power he has. Somebody shout hallelujah. 2.3 billion Christians. 1 billion is Roman Catholic. Born again, I'm told they, they are trying to count, but we're not getting to 800 million. We're between 500 to 600 of the 8 billion people in the world. And even there, we're still divided. For Apollos, for Paul, he has a snake, he has a rabbit. I suspect that he goes underwater. I was reading recently and they were saying the Pentecostal movement alone has more than a thousand denominations and all of these are points of contention on doctrine. I don't agree with you. Jesus was not born on Tuesday. He was born on Friday. Another denomination is formed. Look at our churches and how breaking up they are. It just rebels. I quarrel with Pastor Paul. I don't understand him. I said, and then a guy goes and starts another church. And then he brings, and then another group of rebellious boys come and they mess it up and they also go to the next level. And so it's it's prodigal against prodigal against prodigal against prodigal against prodigal against prodigal against prodigal. And all of them are believing God for revival. <laughs> How do we have a conversation to a prodigal son concerning revival when he had not understood the law of inheritance? He doesn't understand how the law of inheritance works. He's not, not get it. Why God would anoint David in 1 Samuel 16 for king and he still doesn't put him in the office and takes him to a man who has the anointing of the office soul and he sits there to serve him even when the man with the office of the, the anointing of the king is here and God tells him, yes, demons are going to go on this guy and you're going to see him turn 
but play an instrument and get, cool these demons because you must work your way from the anointing of the king to the anointing of the officers and those are two different anointings <laughs> having a good voice does not make you a worshiper being able to articulate and connect logic and, and, and reasoning does not make you a good teacher it doesn't but to a pragmatic world that is first and second dimensional you just need to be a good speaker and they'll say that's a good teacher of the word or that's a, an anointed man of God because we don't know the difference between the anointed and the simply gifted <laughs>